Um, we still have people joining us, so I will start the I will start uh, the webinar, and as people come in, they will join us because it's not fair that all of us would be waiting. Um, for the new people, special welcoming to you, of course, and for regular people, uh, I had to change the time for today. And uh, also, I would like to get your feedback if you'd like to uh, type uh, into the question, uh, you know, if this time is okay or uh, or two, uh, two hours from now is better than our regular time. I'm still playing with the times, trying to accommodate as many people as possible. So if you could, um, if you could write, uh, you know, what time, uh, uh, let's say GMT time would fit you the most. And I'm still trying to be flexible with these things. But today we ha we did have to start earlier. You go have certain engagements after that. Okay. And again, I apologize that for some reason it doesn't show the full screen over here. I really don't know why. So um, let's start. Uh, it's a roundtable uh, discussion a webinar. What we do here, it's very simple. People come with specific questions about specific markets. We have up to an hour, and um, please feel free to ask questions. We'll be taking a look at the trading platform. We'll be sharing uh, sharing opinions. And it's a nice, uh, dynamic process. Few things about myself. This is me, Simon Friedman. I'm a senior account manager with Avatrade. And uh, my overall experience uh, with trading, it's uh, 23 years now. June was 23 years since I started the year 2000. It was a very interesting time when the dot-com bubble burst. Uh, I did it for about 11 years, intense uh, proprietary trading, and then I moved into a less stressful trading, and I started to uh, to help other traders by mentoring and educating. And now I'm very happy I have an opportunity to help our customers at our trade. Uh, we ask questions, uh, we discuss things, then we analyze the instruments and try to really see what's happening. Uh, risk warning, you can find the full statement at avatrade.com. Uh, what we do here is purely educational. Uh, please, uh, I would encourage you to subscribe if you if you haven't yet to our channels. You have Telegram, Twitter, and my favorite, as I always say, the YouTube channel, where you can find a lot of tutorials, a lot of educational material, a lot of webinars, including this one, will be posted later on. So if you miss any of our webinars, which we have a lot of them, uh, you can go back and watch uh, the webinar at a convenient time. Okay, so uh, we're gonna move now to, uh, let's be uh, practical, let's ask specific questions. Uh, we'll be happy to discuss them and, uh, and come up with some answers. Uh, as, as long as we have questions, we're going on up to an hour. I'll be happy to, to, to participate in this. And if we run out of questions, we're going to wrap it up until the next time, okay? So please feel free, ask the question. There are no, there are no stupid questions. Uh, please feel free uh, to really understand that the question about specific instrument did you, did you ask might be helping somebody else that was thinking about it or maybe will open uh, their eyes to, to some markets that they would be happy to follow. Okay, so uh, who's going to be the first one asking the question? Again, uh, for new people, scenario is very simple. Uh, you throw in the question about specific instrument. It, it could be uh, any commodity, any uh, index, uh, stocks uh, that we offer, uh, forex pairs, anything, and we'll discuss it together. So let's start. Okay, we are uh, a nice group of people here. And I hope that we'll have plenty of interesting questions and it will benefit everybody. Again, in order for us to go, I do need your questions. I do not fake questions. So I'm not going to be pretending that somebody has someone, something and I throw it in. So I need real questions. So guys, let's go. Let's make it fun. More people are coming in. So I'm just going to repeat for everyone. Let's start asking questions about specific instruments and let's start discussing it. I wouldn't really like to close the webinar without any questions. That's not fun. So let's go, guys. Feel free. 
again, I try to remind everyone, you're here, you're trading. That means you must have some questions and you are here for the webinar. So please feel free to ask those questions. Going once. Again, I see some people raising hands. You don't need to raise hands. Just type the question into the question window. Just type whatever the question you have. Just type it in. I'm going to read the question and we'll try to uh, we'll try to answer that. I see that Anthony was trying to raise the hand. Anthony, do you have a question? If you do, please type it in to the question window. Go ahead, guys. I hope you can hear me. That's, that would be really fun. Okay. So Anthony is asking, hey, is any tools helping with trading to set automatically low stop, et cetera? Uh, it's, again, it's a general question. I'm going to answer it as long as uh, we have time. Uh, but I would like to have specific questions about the instruments. But uh, to set automatically low stop, uh, there's, there's a, a lot of tools that helps with trading. Uh, so setting uh, stop losses, you meant to say by saying low stop. Uh, set, uh, traders like to use stop losses so you can protect your capital, uh, whether you put it uh, manually by hand or there's some uh, EAs or uh, expert advisor, robots, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they also exist that they can do the job for you if you if you tell them what to do as far as uh setting up stops but yes you're right uh, stop loss is one of the tools uh, some people like to use indicators uh, some people uh, use other things there's a lot of things uh, that you can use but let's stick uh, let's stick to the questions about specific markets guys i can't believe i still didn't get any answer any uh, question about any market so i'm a little bit confused but i hope you will remove that confusion by really asking questions so let's go. We have a nice group of people. Uh, again, I'm going to repeat to everyone that we have up to an hour, and uh, I would like to hear a lot of questions. We're going to discuss things and look at the charts and try to make things uh, fun and practical. Uh, but I need your help for that. I need your questions. I'm not going to make up questions. I'm not going to fake them. So if we don't have questions, we're going to say goodbye until the next time. But I believe that uh, from a nice group of people like you, uh, we could have some nice questions, uh, a scenario. Somebody would ask, what do you think about oil? What do you think about gold? What do you think about euro dollar? What do you think about DAX or NASDAQ or S&P or a specific stock? So uh, I'll just give you a, a simple scenarios. So let's uh, let's uh, let's ask questions. Okay, Joel is asking. I'm new here, and my question is not really about specific instrument, but how to determine whether the last close trade failed or was profitable. Uh, Joel, I'm really sorry, but I'm not. I'm not getting your question. Again, I'm going to read it. Uh, you're saying how to determine whether the last close trade failed or was profitable. I mean, you could see it if you open the trade and then you close the trade. You could see in your history whether you made money or you lost money. That's uh, very simple. And you should see it before you close it as well, because that, that could be a reason for you closing, whether to take a profit or uh, cut the loss short, right? I hope that works. OK. Uh, again, I apologize if I uh, mispronounce your names. I have someone by the name Protest asking how does interest rate correlate to inflation in stocks such as NASDAQ 100 gold and USD pairs? Okay, so, um, so first of all, uh, stocks are stocks and NASDAQ gold and US pairs, those are different assets. So NASDAQ is the index that's close to stocks because it, it has about 100, uh, companies, 100 uh, stocks within it. Gold is the commodity, and US dollar pairs is the currency pairs. And it's a great question. How does interest rate co uh, correlate? So when interest rate is being increased, and we're going to start with the dollar, 
index here just to illustrate see all this move that started in uh, june of 2021 and continued all the way to september end of september of last year that was uh mostly caused by the feds increasing the interest rate and speaking of which in a couple of hours uh, we're gonna have uh, in a few hours we're gonna have uh fomc minutes when the uh fomc they they uh will share with us the results of the last meeting so we we just had the interest rate decision and there was uh, a pause this time in june there was no increase but we have another one coming in Ju i think july 26 if i'm not mistaken and uh market is pricing in another increase of 0.25 percent uh, so uh going back so what when they increased the interest rate the value of the dollar increased as well and uh, if you could see the same period of time starting uh, june 2021 if you take nasdaq you actually saw uh, june Okay, started a little bit later, but the sell-off happened as, as the increase happened. What happens, uh, the companies, when the interest rates were low, and we, you know, we can go back uh, to 2008 crisis since then, and the feds uh, really uh, cut the rates. And uh, something they, they call, you can call it printing money or, or free money or whatever it is. And companies use that opportunity and they expanded because money was pretty much free. It was zero interest rate. And then when the Fed started to increase it, they really started hitting the bottom line of the companies because uh, they added uh, expense, something that repaying the borrowed money and that the interest uh, could be huge. And as the interest increased, the market was reacted to it. So uh, again, just to, to give a short uh, version of uh, we, you know, we can talk about this for days probably, but the short version, when they do increase interest rate or when they did increase interest rate, the dollar value went up. So all the pairs uh, uh, they were affecting uh, towards um, towards the dollar going up. So if it was uh, euro dollar, it went down. If it's pound dollar, it went down. If it's uh, dollar yen, it went up and so on. And um, so dollar was, was strong and the, the equity market that includes both stocks and the indices they went they went down and also uh gold was selling off as well as the dollar value was going up okay that's the answer to your question and we have next question please explain what is the fmc uh, meaning about how does it impact on the markets um I, I just partially answered the question and uh, guys, please prepare the questions about specific markets. I would like to hear that, but I will answer this question as well. Uh, FOMC uh, basically is the feds and they're focusing now on really the biggest focus is to fight the inflation. They need to bring the inflation in the US to 2%. So every meeting they have, every, uh, I mean, the last one was, uh, uh, I think the meeting of the central bankers in uh, Portugal recently, and before that, uh, the chair uh, Powell was uh, speaking or or testifying uh, before the Congress, and it's the same mood pretty much. They're focusing on on uh, bringing the inflation down. So if you take this FMC uh, meeting minutes that we're going to hear soon, uh, there will basically the market expects pretty much the same mood which is a uh, hawkish mood or aggressive mood in continuing uh, increasing the interest rate which is not so great for the markets because like i said uh, the money is not cheap anymore and uh, companies and the banks are being affected by it and every big company is being affected or any company for that matter is being affected by that so Today, if the mood is the same, we might see the market selling. If for some reason they will say, wow, well, things are getting great and maybe we consider uh, not raising the rates, I'm just you know, speculating there. That also could be a scenario, but as of now, 
uh, they're pretty much on the same course and uh, that uh, causing the market to go into correcting a little bit. If you take S&P 500 or NASDAQ, you could see that we had a nice run to the upside, but the market is uh, experiencing some pressure. And uh, today we had, uh, if you take the hourly chart, we had the sell off in the past, actually two, three hours where they uh, moved to the upside. So market is very sensitive and it looks like volatility is increasing. So we are waiting for the feds to really announce what's, you know, what's on their uh, agenda. Are they really continuing being aggressive and continuing increasing the rates or things are gonna get softer, which might cause the equity markets to run if uh, something they call a dovish mood prevails, all right? Um, what it means to change the stop loss to entry? Uh, guys, these questions, individual questions, they're great, but please ask them, uh, ask this question to your, to your assigned um, uh, account managers, because this is specific, it's better to, to speak on the phone about it so you can actually explain it because the question here again i don't want to judge you anything but uh stop loss to entry uh, stop loss is not an entry stop loss it's actually an exit order that when you're entering the position you have a stop loss to protect your capital so you you entering with uh with uh buy stop or sell stop but stop loss by definition, it's the exit, not the entry, okay? So please uh, feel free to, to speak with your account managers and share with them your questions. They'll be happy to uh, to help you. Okay, guys, do we have some uh, real questions as far as the instruments? All these general questions are great, but that's not the purpose of our webinar. So let's let's go. We, we are still growing. People, More people are coming in. So again, I just repeat for everyone, uh, let's be active. Let's ask specific questions about specific assets or markets and uh, the charts are open. We'll be taking a look at it and discuss it together, okay? Let's go, we're about 21 minutes into the webinar. We still have a lot of time. Let's use it proactively. Let's go guys. Anyone? Disney, wonderful. Finally, we have a question. Uh, before I even pull the question, the, the last thing again, by the way, I forgot to say, if I do know anything fundamentally about the stocks, I'll share with you as well. So the Disney, the last thing with Disney was, uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, the CFO, the chief financial officer, the lady, don't remember her name, she announced the resignation. So I think this was the move uh, down since then because it doesn't look good. And Disney had a hard time. Uh, the main thing, Fundamentally, is the uh, the streaming uh, part of business, which uh, is doing uh, not so great. And then the ex CEO came back; uh, they got excited. This was, I think, the move when the ex CEO came back. Then we moved down. Then we moved up again. And it looks like we're establishing the support around here, around sixty, eighty six, eighty seven dollars. But I think I think the last move it really pushed uh, pushed Disney down and it looks like we're really sitting at the bottom here so we need some good news uh from disney maybe to move higher or if there's no good news there's a lot of pressure to the downside so it could be anything this is the monthly chart we might move lower as well uh but as of now uh disney if you take a weekly chart this was uh kind of a, <clears throat> a last uh, recent support around 8460 from which we bounced and we are sitting in a three dollar range for about a week or so so fundamentally uh, which is a big part of course <clears throat> of trading stocks uh, we need some good news in order to start to bounce or we need some uh, bad news in order for it to break and of course the general market uh, is also affecting the individual stock so we'll see what in general what the market is doing what the indices are doing and if the market decides to sell off and maybe today's comment will add to it or the opposite the market could run so it could take the stocks either up or down okay 
what are your again uh, great question what are your predictions for euro jpy i just want to say I, I really don't do predictions okay and uh, as i said what we do here it's purely educational so we do, do not suggest any trades but uh be, the train is asking about Euro JPY, so let's bring it up. And I would like to, to ask you a question, uh, Bill Trent. What do you think? You asked the question, so obviously you're trading it. And um, again, I just want to bring it up. It's important that we discuss things together. And if anybody has idea about uh, Euro JPY, please share with us. And also, uh, Bill Trent, uh, please write what you think about Euro. JPY here, and then we'll put all these things together and we'll discuss. I'm just trying to locate it. Here it is. Okay. So just say, if anybody has anything to say about uh, Euro JPY, please share with us, guys. As I said, it's a round table. It's a not a uh, one-way discussion. It's not a monologue, right? So let's have a dialogue here. Okay. Meanwhile, again, uh, my approach in trading, uh, I repeat again, I don't predict anything. Predicting, it's not the best thing. So uh, what I do, I look at the instrument. If I choose to trade something or if I have a question about something, I always bring the chart and I start with uh, the highest time frame, which is the monthly one. So important to know where the instruments is coming from. And always compare it uh, to going to a museum. If you, you know, I spent most of my life in New York, so you go to Metropolitan Museum of Art, and then you see, you know, some small paintings, but if you see some huge paintings that take the whole wall, you can't really uh, look at it uh, by standing close. You need to really step back and see the whole picture. So this is the same thing. You need to step back and understand the whole picture. So let's try to think. We had a, a fall here after a, a real move to the upside. The fall that started in 2008, when the global markets collapsed, we had uh, dollar yen went down. I think the main reason the yen really went up that time as a safe haven. As markets collapsed, a lot of money went to yen. So we came here and we stopped, take a look, we stopped at the previous level of consolidation here where we moved higher then we made a lower low another zigzag and we ended up being much lower and there was 2012 july since then we had the sharp move up and we broke the previous resistance then correction moved higher and then we came back and guess what few few times we stopped at the same level here around 114.71 right here Right here, a lot of consolidation here, again and again. And from here, we finally moved higher, and that's our uh, kind of a, a current uh, mood, which is a bullish move, very strong one, breaking the previous resistance. And take a look. So we start with a very strong month of June. So we can mark the June top as our immediate resistance in a way, right, approximately. So high here was 157.995. I'm gonna mark that. Okay, so we established that in June, we made, a, after in, in continuation with this very strong bullish move, we ended up uh, making a high of 157.995. Then take a look at the weekly chart. The following week, we couldn't break it. And let's take a look at the daily. It's gonna be more clear. It looks like after this move, we're really consolidating here. So it could be a few things or two things actually. We could consolidate before the next move to the upside, or we could be going into a correction like we did here or here. And that's what we'll be watching. And fundamentally speaking, 
you know, uh, the, the main reason, if you take any pair with Japanese yen in it, it's been super strong against Japanese yen. And I, I'll give you a little secret, something that I prepared for my webinar, uh, I think, uh, last week. This pair right here, CHF-JPY, again, I'm not suggesting anything, like this is not something that we do, but over here, the level that I mark 157.99, actually, that's not it. I have it on this chart. 159.88 level. You don't see it here because you can't go that far. But I, I, ch I check on the historical charts. This level that we just hit last month is the level, get ready for that, is the level of 44 years ago, December 1979. We were at this level, and after 44 years, we hit it again. So that's that's how weak the Japanese yen is. And going back to fundamentals, the main reason why it was weak, because out of all the major central banks, the Bank of Japan hasn't done anything to increase interest rates for all these years. Everybody did. We had 10, 9, 12 increases from U.S., uh, Bank of England, uh, European Central Bank, uh, Bank of Australia, Bank of New Zealand, that had increases, Bank of Canada, all of them had huge amount of increases, and um, Bank of Japan is the only one that hasn't done anything. That's why most of the pairs, or all of the pairs against the Japanese yen, are experiencing a uh, blast. They're really moving higher. So. If that continues, we might see even continuation to the upside. But on this chart, as you could see, weekly could be our indication or as far as the resistance, we should be watching the last week's high, which is 157.99. It could be, like I said, it could be that we're building up for next leg to the upside, or we could be building a resistance and then we're gonna slide. I mean, ideally, for Japanese yen, would, ideal scenario would be if we hear the announcement or surprised action by Bank of Japan for increasing the rates. But they're not doing it for very simple reason. They're trying to really recover their market. And this is it. This is Nikkei, the Japanese market. It's been doing great. This is the monthly chart. Take a look. We just broke to the previous resistance of 2020. It's the same reason that we're going back to our first original questions for today. The interest rates are really affecting the equity. Cheap money continues to play a role in the Japanese market. Okay. I hope that answer helps. And um, we are uh, about 31 minutes into the webinar. So let's go. Let's go into the next question. Uh, but Tran, your comment here, if the Bank of Japan didn't increase any uh, any interest rate, it made it make it quite stable. It, it makes the market stable, yes, but the yen is not really doing great. And for Japan, uh, it's kind of a, uh, on one hand, they're making money uh, on export. So every everything that's being produced in Japan uh, increased uh, increased in uh, profits for the Japanese company, of course, and that's why you see the Nikkei is going higher. And uh, Warren Buffett uh, this year had many announcements that he's in heavily investing in Japanese market. But uh, you have to remember that uh, Japan uh, is buying all the resources, commodities abroad and paying in dollars pretty much. So everything they do bring into the country costs them a lot of money because of the cheap yen. So it, go, it works both ways. Okay, guys, um, do we have another question or a few questions? Let's uh, let's move on. Let's ask questions. Uh, let's be more dynamic, more active, and uh, let's go. We still have time. Like I said in the beginning, if we run out of questions, we're going to wrap it up. 
until the next week. And while I'm waiting for the questions, I would like to, to, to ask you all, the whole group, if you could uh, type into, uh, into the question uh, window, just type is if this time is uh, comfortable for you. Uh, we're talking, uh, we started uh, at 4 p.m. London time. So, or uh, 3 p.m. GMT. Uh, let me know if this time is convenient or the regular time that we do at 5 p.m. GMT, which is 6 p.m. London time, is more convenient. Just write what time is convenient out of two options, okay? I've, that would really help me, so please help me out here. Um, uh, the reason I'm asking that I'm trying to accommodate as many people as possible. I know that some people are uh, preferring certain times, so I would like to accommodate as many people as possible. Okay, Eric, thank you. Better time for me now for you. Okay, wonderful. Guys, please, uh, I would like to hear everybody's opinion. So I, it's kind of a, you know, decision making here. So I need your help. And uh, while you're doing that, also think of next question. We still have time. Okay, Joel, thank you. 6 p.m. London, better for you, okay. Keep going, guys. I need I need everybody's answer. I would re really, really appreciate it. It just takes a second of your time. And uh, also, uh, I would like to hear some questions uh, so we continue with the topic of our webinar. That would be also amazing. All right, thank you guys for feedback. Keep going, whoever didn't answer about the times. Okay, the earlier, okay. All right. I got an idea. Whoever didn't answer, please type it, type it in. So I'll get a kind of a, uh, a general idea uh, based on, uh, based on uh, people that are here today. Okay. 3, 3 p.m. GMT, okay. We have kind of a mix, the messages. Okay, well, we'll decide what time we'll do it. Uh, so, uh, great question, uh, Beltran is asking. Uh, what happens with the market between 10, uh, 10, 11 p.m.? I see the price makes jumps. My mentor told me it's because the spreads are higher. I don't understand it, please. Can you explain? You see, uh, around 5 p.m. New York time, uh, what happens, uh, happens especially in the Forex market. So I assume you're talking about this. Uh, thank you guys for, first of all, for uh, letting me know about the times. Uh, it really helps, I appreciate that. So uh, around 5 p.m. New York time, uh, what, what happens, as you know, in the Forex market, it's not really an, an exchange. It's not NASDAQ, it's not New York Stock Exchange, it's not centralized exchange. Uh, the, 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 the quotes are being provided by different banks. So around that time, uh, the liquidity is falling because bank, you know, banks, it's kind of recess, requotes, whatever it is. And during that time, uh, you could see the, the spreads are widened. So for instance, if you have Euro dollar, a regular spread is about 0 0.9 pips. So you could see around that time uh, spread even uh, four, five, sometimes 10 pips, and that's normal. And I always say some, some customers uh, tend to complain about it. And if you understand what's happening, because these are real quotes from real uh, liquidity providers, real banks that provide liquidity for the exchange, for the currency exchange. So I would say, if you don't see that, that means you're trading with the broker that is just painting a nice picture because you cannot, if the liquidity providers have wider spread, how can the broker keep the uh, tight spread? It's impossible. So yes, around that time, sometimes it lasts for up to an hour until the spreads go back to normal. 
So some people uh, don't trade that time. Some people even uh, move their stops or remove their stops for that time. But that's a tough choice also. Because what happened when you see the widened spread, you can get caught in the spike and get out on the on the stop and then see later on that the spread goes to normal and you would have stayed in the position. So it does happen and it is caused by low liquidity. So the the uh, intrabank uh, trades are kind of on hold, I guess. You can you can research it yourself, the exact things. And uh, as the liquidity is low, the spread is widened, and slowly it's getting narrow. It gets to the normal spread, and then 24 hours later, the same thing happens. All right. Okay. Uh, we are about 40 minutes into the webinar, and uh, I would like to know if we do have any specific questions, and I will be happy to address them. I'll give you three seconds, and uh, if not, we'll see each other next week, God willing. So do we have a specific question, guys? Going once. Go twice. Okay, uh, we really having a shy audience today, but we did manage to have a few questions. I want to thank everyone for participating, and we should be back next week. Enjoy the week. Uh, watch the announcement of the Feds today, and uh, of course the major, the main, uh, the main event of this week besides the Feds meeting today is the NFP which is on Friday, that's the non-farm payroll. It's one of the aspects that being watched by feds in their decision, and that's the uh, how many jobs were added, and what is uh, what is the unemployment and other things. Uh, but trying to see a question, RSI to be more efficient, uh, I really, I can't answer that question. This is the, uh, the question about indicators. You can read, there's so much material about it. Uh, some people use them and uh, love them. Some people don't. It's individual. You can learn about RSI. You can practice uh, with RSI, see what works, what doesn't. But I just want to say one thing. All the indicators are good if they are supporting uh, what you do, what you know how to do. Because there's always a discussion among traders, uh, you know, what, you know, what, What's first, a chicken or, or an egg? It's like a life uh, long question. Because indicators sometimes are late to the party, and uh, some traders like to call them the lagging indicators. They're just supporting the move. So if you understand the dynamics of the market and the price action of the market, and then if, if you see the indicator that you choose that includes RSI, if it supports your idea, so it helps as an addition. Again, some people uh, just based the, the strategy on RSI or other indicators, and also some of them are successful. So it's very individual, and you're the only one that can say how and if it works for you. Okay, all right, guys, uh, have a wonderful week. Have a successful week. Have success in trading and everything you do. And uh, please, uh, if you do watch this uh, webinar, on uh, YouTube, I would really appreciate if you write your comments, if you put the likes, if you subscribe, if you're not subscribed yet, and that would be really, really amazing. All the best, guys. Take care.